Hello, my soccer universe. I gotta be honest with you. Yesterday's Europa League evening did not really register with me. I was too depressed about the last performance. And only very late on, Homo's equalizer for Roma at Spurs gave me a little chucky and actually made the end of my day a little bit better. However, watching the highlights this morning, there was actually quite some interesting stuff going on in there. I think this is probably the most level competition of all three of them. And for that reason, probably also the most interesting one. Although I have to say, I'm really waiting for the knockout stages already, but we see already that a few teams that might be on the brink of elimination, Roma being one of them, but maybe with Ranieri, there is now a turnaround coming. Also interesting was that both English teams did have their struggles with their opponents. Yes, United got a win, Spurs got the draw, but United's win, when you look at who Bodo Glimt were playing, was not a good result at all, but it keeps United, of course, in contention. And then another team that I really like finally got their first Europa League win, which is Pau hanging back there. Yes, it was only at RFS, but that's a lifeline. Maybe the Greek champions will qualify as well. Let's quickly summarize what was happening on Thursday evening. A late and slightly deflected equalizer by Amusu earns Anderlecht a 2-2 draw at home against Porto. Porto led twice first through a penalty that was rather questionable. The head of the attacker was rather low. However, after the half, Anderlecht not only hit the post, but also got the equalizer through the grave. And then you thought that in the 83rd minute Porto had found the winner. Alas, it was not to be. In Bilbao, Athletic Club got a rather unforced 3-0 win over Ellsberg. It was already in the 6th minute when Guru Zeta assists Adama Boyro to get the opener in the 24th minute Nico Williams assists Prados Diaz 2-0 and then Gurusetta adds a third in the second half. AZ started with a lot of energy in their tie against Galatasaray, taking already the lead in the second minute. However, the Gala goalie did not look good on that first goal through Mainana. Then they had a few more chances, especially one by Van Bommel, who just missed wide. Gala getting equalized through Osima, although it looked a little bit more like an own goal. And they were then closer in the second half, having a few more chances, especially Osima, I think, even had a goal chalked off. But as that earned there. 1-1 one, one draw. Meanwhile, Gala's rival, Besiktas, suffer a home defeat to Maccabi Tel Aviv. A rather shock home defeat. However, home is not really the right way to say it because that game was hastily scheduled to be played in Debrecen to avoid ugly scenes like we saw in Amsterdam just a few weeks ago. Maccabi had a 2-1 lead at the halftime through Kanikowski and Peretz. Uh, Rafa Silva getting the equalizer for Besiktas. However, Giri Mobile had a great chance to equalize. He had a penalty, saw it saved, and then Wesley Patati gets the win for Maccabi. Copy. We also saw the first goal for Dynamo Kiev, however, came too late, despite it being a beautiful one, through Kabayev in the 95th minute. However, just before in, in the second half, Vidra and in Schultz had already given Victoria a 2-0 lead, meaning Dynamo Kiev is still towards the bottom of the table. From bottom to top, Lazio cannot break down Ludogorets, but still stay top of the Europa League table overall. The biggest chances were a potential penalty that then after VAR review was chalked off, and also Guendouzi hitting the crossbar in the 85th minute. Meanwhile, Lyon get a very convincing 4-1 win in Baku against Karabakh. It was the Mikodatsu show who gets the first and the last goal for OL in between Tolisso and Fofana scored two more. Very late on Juninho with a penalty gets a consolation goal. However, it was deflected in by the goalie. And Park also finally get the win at RFS, the freshly crowned Latvian champions. This ball of Orin in the second minute put Park on the winning ways and then Shalov in the 59th doubles the lead and Pauk seed out lifeline for the Greek champions. As in his first game as new Hoffenheim coach, Chris Itzel found himself quickly 1-0 down thanks to Brumor goal against Braga. However, this time around there was no comeback for Hoffenheim. Fernandes quickly in the eighth minute already adds a second one. Then Braga saw it more or less easily out and get a fully deserved and beautiful third goal through Vitor Cavallo. No goals in the meeting of Romanian champions FCSB against reigning Conference League champions Olympiakos. FCSB definitely wanted to get the next home win. However, this became a really tough task and Pirli Gea got sent off with a yellow-red midway through the second half. With two early goals by Varga, Ferenc Vars put themselves already on the path to victory against Malma. Yes, both time pulled one back with a penalty in 18th minute by the second half. Ferenc Vars get the win home through Kadi Borges and Cisse scoring two more in a 4-1 win. Ruben Amarim also gets his first win as a United 
coach Heimer, this was not an easy one. It was the Rasmus Heulund show, but as we said, the Bode Klimt played with a second string squad as they're preparing for the finale in the Norwegian Championship. They went down in the first minute through a Garnacho goal when a Heulund shot got meekly parried by the goalie Evian and Sinkanai actually turned the game around and just before the half, Heulund after Maseravi assist gets the equalizer and he himself then very nicely converts the Ugart across in the 50th minute that then United see out, but this was a really, really hard work and I guess still a lot of work to do for Ruben Amorim. Minuch Eintracht Frankfurt continued a great form and it was Marmouche who was involved in all two goals in a 2-1 win at Midjylland. First he assists Lars in the seventh minute. Midjylland in the second half came up, got a quick equalizer, however then a penalty, rather questionable one, that is converted by Marmouche in the 57th minute and Eintracht then really didn't need to overstretch themselves to get this one home. Rangers got an eye-catching 4-1 win at Nice. Czerny, Diomand and Igaman 10 minutes before the half scored three goals and then Igaman himself in the 54th adds a fourth one only laid on Bunani can pull one back big win for Rangers. It was a rather even affair and for the first time Ajax do not score losing 2-0 at Real Sociedad. They hit the post twice by Broby and Fitzjim but it's then two late goals by Baranche in the 67th and Kubo in the 85th minute to give Real Sociedad the win. Slavia thought they had Fenerbahce on the ropes taking a 7th minute lead through Hori. However, Jacob with a great shot in the 35th minute equalizes and then late on it is Enneziri who give Fenerbahce a vital win for the Europa League campaign. In probably the most entertaining time of the entire evening, Tottenham and Roma play out a 2-2 draw, but there was so much happening in there that I will probably forget even something. Son gave Spurs already an early lead in the fifth minute through a penalty. However, Ndika then equalizes in the 20th, and just a few minutes later, you thought that Ejarav had put Roma ahead. No, it was not to be. Then, plenty of chances. I think Kulusevski was at least involved in Spurs once hitting the woodwork. He also assisted Brennan Johnson for the go-ahead goal. Son once missing a uh, hitting over the bar, but there were also chances for Roma in there. This was a wide open game, especially in the second half. Dovbik had a goal disallowed. Roma probably would have deserved the equalizer on the other side. <laughs> Spurs twice more hit the woodwork themselves. Roma also did. They get an equalizer through Hummels who had given away the first penalty in the 91st minute. And I think it was a deserved draw. Big points for Roma. And finally, in a Benelux duel, an early goal by Fuseni give Union Saint-Gilois the win over Twente. Twente just having not enough to break down the Belgians. I would say after five rounds, it makes sort of sense to look at the standings before we look at the expected standings as well. The big down for the Europa League is that we have only 2.3 goals on average. Kind of tells you that the games are relatively tight. There are no blowout wins per se. The three teams at the top are Lazio, Athletic Club, the hosts of the final, and Eintracht Frankfurt at the moment. All of those look rather safe moving on already. Galatasaray, Anderlecht, even Ajax, although they just lost, look safe as Dubion, Rangers, Spurs and FCSB even who also have three wins already. United only in 12th place also tells a story and then there's a pileup of really interesting teams on the bubble if you would like. We have Roma, Besiktas, we have Porto, we have Union saint we have Hoffheim just outside Slavia Praha and Pauk also in there. The latter two maybe not as much of a surprise but still these are two teams that it was not too long ago that they had some deeper European runs. However, it's the expected standings where we're really getting a feel because we also project the final three games. We see Athletic Club is now favored to finish top ahead of Lazio, ahead of Frankfurt. So it's still the three teams, just the order is a little bit different. Spurs have dropped already too many points. They will finish in fifth, but you know, still getting the bye. As Scala Tassaray, Anderlecht also really performing well. And Lyon, although they might get relegated from League 1. Manchester United need to hope to get on a run for now. And if you look at the second part of the standings, there's again this interesting pileup of relatively big name teams, Roma, Braga, Porto, Midtjylland, Besiktas, Hoffenheim, all just about in. But you know, they also might fall out relatively soon. Probably the biggest disappointment though, I gotta say, has to be Nice sitting only in 31st expected place. That's really low. Conversely, if you look at the overall chances, yes, 
Spurs might likely get a buy, United not much so, but they are still rated the highest among all the teams, should be considered the favorites. However, Lazio, Athletic Club, Frankfurt, Lyon, maybe Roma in there, I cannot quite see it, but maybe Ranieri can get something together. But this is basically the range of the favorites. A team like Galatasaray or Ajax or Porto and so on, they really need to get a little bit of luck of a draw and a real run together in order to challenge at least for a semi-final, I would argue. And I really have to say the match day six gives us some really tasty ties. Fenerbahce against Athletic Club. That's already interesting. Roma against Braga. Vital game for both of these two. Then a little bit further down, Pilsen against United. Pilsen will probably like their chances against United. But then Ajax, Lazio, a tie where already Lazio fans have been barred. Dutch and the Romans, that's not a good relationship, but I expect this to be a very tense affair. We then further have Lyon against Frankfurt, that's a top match with Rangers against Spurs. Really great one. So, I mean, plenty of great matches. I'm actually looking forward to looking at this menu, to be honest. Well, in conclusion, I have to say, despite me not paying too much attention to the Europa League this past Thursday, that was actually my mistake because there was some really interesting stuff in there and I think it's getting even better. I'm sure that once I'm relieved of Lusk Duty and that is only two more games, I might actually switch a little bit more focus onto the Europa League. Quite some great teams in there, quite some great games. And I really wonder, will the English teams really march through or will it be a surprise if Galatasaray can hang on to Ozyman? I could see something happening there. But, you know have to wait and see. Let me know what your thoughts on the Europa League, how it might develop over the next few weeks. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!